Since the inception of this channel, I've had one goal, to turn myself from a fashion amateur into a style icon. Oh yeah, I saw the comments. So today I'm taking off the kid gloves and turning to the one place that's always had the answers, the internet, to see if the professionals online can save my style reputation before it's too late. Hello Internet! Welcome to Style Theory, the one perfect staple for any wardrobe. Now, I'm gonna be real with you for a second. As I close out my time as theorists reigning style ingenue, I felt it was time to put my money where my mouth is and really take a cold hard look at my own clothing. I gotta be the first to admit, I started from very humble roots. You know you have a long way to go when your default outfit consists of oversized windbreakers and neon button downs from that one store in the abandoned mall in the bad part of town. If my pants had any fewer than 20 pleats, no thank you. But I think that I've come a long way across the last 13 years. I finally started to get a hang on how to dress for my body. I know what I like, bright colors, structure, and jackets. And I also know what I don't like, the general boring state of modern men's fashion that you find in most stores. But obviously I haven't quite mastered all the secrets to taking what I like and truly turning it into fashion, darling. But if I'm truly being honest with myself, I've always been a bit afraid to ask for help in that department. It feels like opening myself up to a lot of judgment. And I'm not alone on this journey either. My partner Stephanie, she's been going on this journey right alongside me. Like me, she's also been trying to figure out what her unique style perspective has been over the last 13 years. I don't feel self-conscious about very many yeah. things on style theory. Like, uh, fine, you, like get in the shower, <laughs> dip myself in mud. Point is, not that easy to embarrass at this point, and I feel I feel self-conscious about this one. Between us being high-powered business owners, living our lives in the public eye for the last 13 years, and also becoming parents, our lives and our styles have gone through a lot of different regenerations. And since we're on the edge of yet another giant life change as I prepare to step away from the channels, it felt like the right time to do what I'm calling the epic four-way stylist showdown. Comparing personal fashion stylists at different costs to see what advice they give and how they can transform my, and by extension your, closet. Here's the thing. We actually planned on this one being one giant finale episode, but there was a lot of really good information that came out of the research for this one. So we're gonna be dividing and conquering here today, slicing this puppy into two separate parts, online stylists versus in-person stylists. So today we're gonna kick this whole thing off by pitting two different kinds of online stylists against each other. The super cheap human options on Fiverr versus the algorithmically driven style box of Stitch Fix. For this test, we're gonna be looking at three main things. One, does the stylist push us out of our comfort zone and get us to try new styles? that we wouldn't have considered before. Steph and I have known that there are items in our closets that we go back to time and time again just because they're the safe and easy choices. But you know what? It's time for us to mix it up. We have sort of comfortable styles that we're in. I think it's really important that people like teach us stuff that we don't know and I think our bar is kind of high for that. And also that we get sort of surprised and pushed out of our comfort zone a little bit. Criteria two, can we customize the experience to our personal likes and dislikes? Sure, we want to update our wardrobe to be better versions of ourselves, but we still want to look like us, right? We want to lean in on the things that we really like and the elements of our personal style that we define as important. We don't want to end up looking in the mirror and thinking, who is this person? And lastly, number three, we want to make sure that we're getting the best bang for our buck. For our online options, our aim is going to be to find the best bargain. So I'm giving our stylists a budget of $600 for both me and Steph. That budget will need to cover any service fees that they have as well as items that they're going to buy. This will truly be a battle for the ages, waging war on the most personal of battlefields, my bodacious buck. So let's just set the stakes here. Who are we using and how much are they costing? The who is pretty straightforward. We took to the internet to find two similarly priced, affordable options that would be able to give us the same kinds of service. When it came to which service to test, we knew going in that we wanted to try out the big daddy of online styling services, Stitch Fix. It is arguably the most popular option out there, and a lot of that's because of one big reason, their algorithm. You see, I'm a numbers guy. I like research and data. And while Stitch Fix does use some level of human styling in its services, it prides itself on its proprietary algorithm. When you fill out their getting to know you survey, all of your answers feed into the Stitch Fix machine. And no, this isn't me just hazarding a guess here. They actually have an entire website dedicated to showing this thing off. And according to them, they're taking into account everything you say you do or don't like. Everything. From the colors you swiped right on to the textures that you gave a hard pass, whether you like your pants to fit very slim or just medium slim. It is all fitting into the seemingly all-powerful engine that can then process your answers and spit you out the perfect outfit. And you know what? I want to believe that. I want to believe so badly that science and data is going to be able to make me into a fashionista. So I'm counting on you to live up to that hype stitch fix. Show me that a data crunching machine is able to understand me 
me and my personal style better than I do myself. That would be awesome. Their service costs 20 bucks up front, and as a bonus, that cost will be credited toward the price of the clothing that we decide to keep. Pretty good deal if you ask me, at least on the surface. We'll get to that later. Speaking of prices, we did some searching to find out human options, and it turns out real human being stylists online, they're kind of expensive, even when they're only talking to you through a screen. Remember, we're only spending $600 per stylist for the two of us, Steph and I, and if I'm paying a couple hundred bucks up front, I might not be able to get any actual clothes that the stylist picks out for me. That meant that we needed to get a bit creative, so we turned to the internet's favorite meme generators of a website, the place you go when looking to spend as little as humanly possible, Fiverr. You may know it for some of its more unusual offerings, but it does have legitimate freelancers offering great services that fell into our price range for this episode. After sorting through some questionable options, we decided to settle on one that seemed pretty darn good. I would like to call out here, just, just for the record, age range, 12 to 18. <gasps> 18, 18 to, to 30. 30. <laughs> we are well outside of his range, Stephanie. We've edged over the line a little bit. We're pushing him out of his comfort zone. Oh, that, it's important for an artist to be able to stretch their wings there. Their service only cost $10 a person, and we'd each get a lookbook made up of five different fully styled outfits. I'm talking tops, bottoms, shoes, and accessories. That cost, plus their 4.9 star rating, felt like a pretty great bargain. So I was feeling good about this as an option. Their example photos were stylish and a little youthful, both good things in our book. The only downside was that sometimes the outfits were repetitive and a little bit beige. We're not big fans of the neutrals over here, in case you couldn't tell. But we were curious if this stylist would be able to translate our colorful tastes into their personal styles. I recognize that I have clothing crutches that I lean on, right? There are certain styles and items and pieces and, and silhouettes that I know just work for me. So with our online stylist selected, it was time to get started. Both Stitch Fix and our freelance stylist gave us the option to fill out a questionnaire to help them get to know us. So Steph and I went in ready to define our personal styles and do some deep self-reflection. And we say, I am type A plus, and my clothing reflects that. Uh, that may be a little confusing. I, I, I don't want anything to get lost in translation. I have a stick so far up my butt, <laughs> you can see it coming out my mouth. <laughs> Even though Steph and I are old by internet standards, neither of us are the type to actually dress old. Compared to other parents around us, we dress pretty young for our age. Sometimes I forget that I'm going to pick up Ollie from school and I end up wearing this to his school and it is, you know, it, it, it doesn't fit in all that well. Let's say there's a lot of polo shirts and a lot of khaki and the bright red furry mecha girl Ah, one of these things is not like the other. So while I was definitely a bit worried that our freelancer would think I wasn't hip enough to style, Steph and I were finding items that we liked within his examples. That's a good one. I think she's looking great. I like that one. Yeah, I and like she's, she's accessories. I like her, I like the boots a lot. I like the proportions. I think she looks cool too. Look, she's also got really nice proportions. I like her styling. I think she looks great. The pants game is strong and it's very asymmetry. It looks like he really likes, yeah, some asymmetry and a really high-waisted pant. Super high-waisted. Like, she, this is up to her rib cage. <laughs> <sighs> Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I also, he has a really strong boot game yep. going on here as well and likes a good hat. So we were starting off pretty strong. We liked what we were seeing, even if we were a bit worried that he wouldn't be able to adjust his style to some of our specific proportions. She's got legs for days. You do not have legs for days, Stephanie. No, Sorry. but but I'm hoping to create the optical illusion of legs for days. You, you don't have legs for days, but you have... I have legs for minutes, maybe. I was going to say, you have torsos for hours. <laughs> there we go. But we went to work, trying to condense over 30 years of personal fashion development development down to a few little text boxes. And Steph made sure to really drill home that proportion concern. I would like to wear styles that elongate my legs. Parentheses, and... I am short. Always straight to the point there, Steph. After the really basic questions, it was time to start in on the very odd task of narrowing ourselves down to precise bullet points and adjectives that would give our freelance stylist a crystal clear example of what our style actually is. Can we say, I am type A plus, and my clothing reflects that? Uh, that may be a little confusing. I usually wear casual clothes to work and don't need uh, formal work outfits. Casual, though, I feel like is gonna give them like a lot of slouchy t shirts and stuff, which is not me. I wear fitted, structured clothes with interesting colors, textures, and patterns. Is that like the most mundane thing for me to possibly no, say? No, I think I that's like actually colors. pretty specific. So when I look at a lot of the stuff that he has here, it's a lot of gray, it's a lot of beige, it's a lot of neutrals. Yeah. And I am not neutral. It's true, me and Khaki, we're not friends. We also made sure to note our love of bright colors and patterns in all of our answers. Uh, slim build? Not lately. Dad build. <laughs> Let's see. 
Medium build, straight, straight medium, up and down. Medium build. Okay, medium build. Very straight. My style is traditional silhouettes with, with quirky patterns or cheeky designs, like my sweater with turtles on it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> is that cheeky? Cutesy? Kawaii? Cute. You're kind of kawaii. Wow. I enjoy sweaters. Yep. You do. I do. You like sweaters and comfy things. I like sweaters, comfortable textiles, and dresses. Let me tell you something, theorists. Editing, it is truly a magic power. That was the highlight reel of our Q&A segment. It actually took us 45 minutes to figure all of this stuff out. That's why I recommend prepping your answers in advance. Also, if you happen to be filling out multiple surveys like this, just hold on to your answers. That way you can just copy and paste them into the next form. For the sake of creating a clean experiment across the four different stylists, that's exactly what we did. Replicating our answers almost exactly for each of their surveys. Any additional info being provided based on any level deeper questions that they asked. And so with Fiverr done and dusted, we were ready for the Stitch Fix questionnaire. Little did we know, though, that we were about to uncover something that would change the entire scope of this episode. Steph and I needed to take turns this time, so I volunteered to go first. And while I was happy to learn that Stitch Fix would waive our $20 styling fee, since it was our first order, I soon realized that Stitch Fix was operating on an entirely different level. It was like filling out the world world's weirdest Tinder profile. Ten. I'm usually a 10. How interested in big and tall sizes am I? <gasps> Ram straight up there. Or Finally. potentially just straight. Let's let's call a spade a spade. That's, <laughs> choose how you like your shorts to fit. Oh, upper thigh. Uh, Whoa. Not. <laughs> Showing off my legs, excuse me. Get out of here. I like this upper thigh one where it's literally like I'm wearing a pair of boxer shorts. Who knew fashion could be so suggestive? Felt like I was gonna be judged for answering a question wrong. What if they don't like my store preferences? What if they don't understand my style reference? Sure, maybe I was being a bit dramatic until they started showing me the clothing options and let me tell you, nothing. I repeat, nothing was my style. This is not no. my style. This is not my style. No. This is too folksy. This is too preppy. This for is you. so preppy. Is this my style? No. Mm, no. These are these are. Oh my gosh. Oh. Nope, I'm going back into shorts land. Nope, V-neck sweater. Oh, no. clogs, wonderful. It was terrible. It was like my personal closet nightmare. A catalog of beige, boring office clothes that were better suited to someone who likes putting on the green rather than wearing green. Neon, preferably. I couldn't believe that there were just no options for someone like me. Was I that much of an outlier when it comes to men's fashion? Clearly, that can't truly be the case. But then, as I tried to think of who my fashion inspirations were for a separate question on the quiz, I realized, yeah, I don't really have anyone that I look to and say, that guy right there, that's who I want to dress as. Well, except for one, I suppose. Who do I look to style inspiration for? No one? Me, myself, and I? I'm trying to think of someone I know who I'm like, oh wow, they have great style. I liked Ken from the Barbie movie. It was colorful, it was fun. But to put it simply, Stitch Fix was not serving up the Kennergy. It's honestly really disheartening that a company as big as Stitch Fix felt so limited in their idea of what modern men's fashion looks like. I've always felt like there's this big hole in the world of men's fashion. One for guys like me and Ken. Guys who like color and a little bit of pizzazz in their outfits. It's part of what inspired me to want to develop my own stuff and do things like the fashion show that we have coming up in April. But as for this episode, I was just stuck, wondering if Stitch Fix's systems would be able to comprehend the complexity, or I guess the supposed complexity, of my personal style. But my personal frustrations aside, that wasn't even the beginning of how low a bar Stitch Fix was actually gonna set. That discovery was just around the corner as Stephanie started her turn. Obviously her quiz had a few extra sizing questions questions, as well as a few more initial styling preferences. What do I like to show off? Uh, I like my shoulders, my back. I think that's fine. If we can camouflage the caboose. <laughs> the rear. Looked like Stephanie was going to actually have a much better time than I did finding options that she liked. Okay, I like that. I like that. I like these. I, I like these things. And you're checking thumbs up on so many more things. Yes. Even though the style themselves, they're not coming together as a collection. Yeah. You are getting individual pieces that work, whereas me, I think I clicked up Thumbs up on like two. A fair number of the options though did feel dated. This is you when you were consulting. Yeah, so this was me like 10 years ago when I worked in corporate America. Yeah, this is- This, this is, is not me now. Past life, Stephanie. But it wasn't long until we started to notice a very unfortunate pattern. How much do I typically spend? Isn't everything the cheaper the better? No, clearly not. This is one of those interesting like gender differences that happen between the male survey and the female survey. Yours is the cheaper the better. What? That Mine feels... was 50 and under. It's like, just, just name the price. Are you interested in premium, premium brands? Brand? What does that mean? What's the definition of a premium brand here? Are we talking Gucci? Or are we talking banana? 
Banana Republic. It's interesting. They're like, we could get this for you for cheap, but we're gonna give you the big right. expensive ones. I can already see what the, the methodology here is, which is weird. And I and I feel like it's also unbelievable that they only do this for women, right. and not for men. Guys don't care. We were shocked at the complete 180 that the questions took here. I've never seen anyone talk about the difference between the male and female experiences on Stitch Fix. I don't think anyone ever realized that there was that big of a difference, but there is clear as day. From how much more detailed and body shape focused the women's survey was, to how they described their pricing and brand options, it was like a completely different world. I think that the differences of me doing this and then immediately you doing it are so fundamentally off. Why would they change the wording? I'm a little bit offended by the way that the women's stuff is, is right. worded, actually. They, they didn't ask us if I wanted premium brands. I, maybe I wanted premium brands. But the worst moment of it all, when they asked Stephanie for her job. Wait, they're asking me my occupation. Whoa! Why? Oh, this is weird, man. Oh, you're getting so many levels of, of questioning that I didn't get. You're not allowed to be an entrepreneur. I was gonna say, where is C-Suite Executive? Whoa! I'm sorry, it's, it's not in this list. It's not in there. A few stitch fix. Oh! <laughs> Stitch Fix, uh, co come in here for a second. We gotta, we gotta have ourselves a little chat. I don't think you were trying to come across as a company with that kind of skeezy double standard of men versus women, but this right here is a bad look. And I really want to give you the benefit of the doubt here, but not only did your quiz try to box me into this very narrow idea of what masculine fashion can look like, but your female survey had us questioning you and your opinion of all your female presenting customers. Yes, Stitch Fix, women can have high-powered jobs. Shock of all shocks. So, uh, take this as a quick moment of self reflection and maybe update your quiz a bit. With our orders secured and Stitch Fix thoroughly shamed, all we had to do was wait for our items to arrive. Our freelance lookbook came equipped with both pictures and helpful shopping links to order each item. As for Stitch Fix, they just sent us a box full of five items ready to go. So with our fingers crossed, it was finally time to see the clothing for ourselves. Hello internet, welcome to our closet. Our real, actual closet. You have seen literally every other room of our house at this point, so why not show you the closet? If anyone's wondering what colors of jacket I'm missing at this point, you can literally see them in front of your eyes. The answer is none. He is missing none colors. Uh, orange? Orange? The purple one's know. upstairs. Yeah, I don't know, this gets, this gets into orange territory, I think. <laughs> Huh? I'm so excited to see what everyone sent in. I'm really hoping that we find some new stuff, some unexpected stuff that looks good on us that we wouldn't have necessarily picked out for ourselves. The goal is to expand our horizons and also see what other people envision us in. I'm excited. But I'm also skeptical. Just based on the surveys alone that we filled out, I don't expect anyone to do all that great. <laughs> and that's not me being picky. I mean, I don't think a lot of people are comfortable working with the patterns and colors that I like. If someone were to walk into my closet and see this, they'll immediately walk back out that door. So I agree with that. I also have two personal bits of reservation here. One is that just we're gonna be trying on a lot of clothes that end up being unflattering. There are a lot of different clothes out there in the universe and not all of us have body types or body shapes that we feel like like really pull everything off. So personally, I'm more in the camp of like, I don't know if, if we're going to get looks where I feel like people understood my body or like my shape. I think my fear is probably would be a pretty common one. Experience of going into a fitting room, being like, I'm gonna love this outfit and then trying it on and being like, Ugh. Which also brings me to my second reservation, which is sizes. Sizes are incredibly variable. You've tried on pants that say that they are the exact same size one fits beautifully, one fits terribly. And so even if you've given people the correct information, just depending on what brand you get sent clothes from, it's really hard to know if it's actually the right size. And with that, it was time to dive into our first set of looks from our Fiverr stylist. And immediately I knew things weren't gonna be great. Remember that time where I'm like, hey, not a big fan of neutral colors and hmm. khakis and whites and creams and stuff. I've seen a lot of neutrals and whites and khakis and creams. That is literally the only thing on there. <laughs> That's all it is. They sell other colors of shirt, guys. Yep, despite Steph and I taking the time to break down our likes and dislikes, including our mutual hatred of beige and love of color, they just ignored all that. They didn't even try. So that was an immediate fail on our goal to see if a human option would be able to customize our lookbook based on our answers. And to make it worse, we were honestly struggling to tell which of the looks were meant for me and which were meant for Steph. I'm not sure if it had to do with Stephanie and I sending our answers together or if our freelancer truly thought Steph and I were just 
just that similar in style, but uh, we did have to take our best shot at dividing these looks into the Matt Pat versus Steph category. That said, we tried our best to remain optimistic. Here's the thing, right? Like the whole point of this is to see what other people can do for us. Like that's yeah. the whole point. So maybe this will work. Right, like, maybe we'll be surprised. Yeah, keep an open mind. Let's Next. keep going. From the five looks we both received, Amy and Ash pulled the two from each set that they felt best represented what the stylist was going for. And that also came in under the $600 budget. In total for the Fiverr outfits, it wound up being $528.69, leaving us just over 50 bucks to put towards something not beige. Overall, we noticed a few key trends in their style. Loose, comfortable silhouettes that spoke of a bygone era. Got a... 80s era Casio watch. Oh yeah, my mom wore one of those. And big chonky shoes. Just a big old honking black shoe. It was a bit like they took my grandpa and put him through a Gen Z filter. Now, I'm not knocking anyone looking to rock the eclectic grandpa style, but let's just say I might not have been the target audience for this one. That said, the only way to know for sure was to take the plunge and try it all on. So, uh, <laughs> I gotta say, it is a look. I don't know if it's my look. Credit where credit's due. This came together much more cohesively than I thought it would. I thought that this would be a bit too monochromatic, a bit too kind of like muted, but in general, it is very colorful. That being said, Wow, is it a departure. And it was. Compared to my everyday style, this was like night and day. Though it was very soft, I appreciated that. Kind of like wearing very fashionable pajamas. Did it fit the things that I was looking for when I said like, I like structure, I like color, I like things that are put together and polished and a little bit more professional? No, I think that this was very much a, I know streetwear, I'm going to do streetwear and I'm gonna layer it onto your body and here it is. When it came to the freelance stylist picking something they thought would suit me, I think we had very different ideas. Or probably more likely, they just gave me a general outfit that they think suits anyone. Who knows though, maybe Steph would have better luck. Well, I think Matthew's outfit really departs like very, very far from anything he would ever wear. I'm still like kind of in the ballpark here. I would say so. And this is not like a perfect look, but I think there's a lot to like here. First of all, I love the shoes. They fit really well. They're great, they're really comfortable. They give me like one extra inch of height, which is always nice. The jeans, which I did not expect to like, I like a lot. They fit really nicely in the waist. They fit really nicely in the buns. I do think that the one place this falters is the trench, which is just definitively too big. I think I just need a smaller size up in here. As happy as I was for Stephanie finding some pieces that she liked, I was still waiting to be wowed by anything. Hopefully outfit two would give me something that I could potentially add to the closet. It's important to note that for this one, the lookbook called out that I needed a beige muscle shirt and we ordered one, it just never showed showed up, so we had to bring back the turtleneck from round one. Thanks a lot for that one, Amazon. So here we've kind of updated things. We have the crucial all white shoe, complete with the white sock underneath that was expressly made clear in every single look that was outlined for us. We've got some jeans, the uh, oversized turtleneck again, a green outer layer, and then of course this time, I don't have a Casio watch, but I got a watch as close as we could. There we have it, Steph. What do you think? You know, I'm trying to decide what I think of this one because it's a very normal look. It's like you normified a little bit and I I like you as you usually are. Aww. Sappy moments aside, I did feel a bit like I was playing dress up back in my old theater days. I see this look and I immediately think I'm living in San Francisco, heading into like my tech clients. It's a little bit chilly and I'm walking my tiny dog because I think it gives me personality. Once again, I could see the vision that our Fiverr stylist was going for it just wasn't me. That's my take on this one. Uh, it is a complete outfit. I think it works as an outfit, but again, is this the vibe that I want to send out to the world? Nah. But while I was busy wallowing away in my beige colored sorrows, Stephanie, she was thriving. So I like this sweater a lot. This is a, totally a sweater I would wear. It's a bit oversized and slouchy. I thought it would look and feel way too big, but actually I really like the hang of it a little bit. I really like having a lot of extra sleeve and some volume there. The pants are super comfortable. I really like these shoes. Shoes. This is a totally comfortable outfit. I can transition from work to hang in with Ollie. I can go run errands. I can do pretty much anything I need to in this outfit. I like it. Whoa. That's weird. I mean, that right there, that is a big win. Stephanie came out of our first option with a full head to toe approved outfit. As for me, I was sitting at a solid 0 for 2, hoping that maybe, just maybe, Stitch Fix would pull out a miracle and find something with color in their warehouse. All right, so next up, we've got our Stitch Fix boxes. And again, 
I'm very curious about this one, because if you recall, the Stitch Fix survey really never nailed any single one of my items. I said no to almost everything. I've actually really wanted to try a service like Stitch Fix for a long time as someone who sometimes feels like they have trouble shopping. And so I'm super excited to see what's in here. Can't wait, actually. Between the two of us, we received a total of 10 items, five each. Except unlike Fiverr, the outfits weren't really complete on their own. While Stitch Fix did include a lookbook, we were expected to have some of the ancillary items to fill out the outfits on hand, which is fine, but with Stitch Fix coming in at a whopping 731 bucks, and that's with the waived styling fee for our first boxes, and only 10 items, it wasn't looking great. For comparison, with our Fiverr outfits, we were able to get 16 items. 16! Now, unlike Stephanie's quiz, I don't think- Isn't everything the cheaper the better? But that does mean Stitch Fix is sending us some pretty pricey stuff. They actually send, like, a full list of where everything came from and the cost of each item. Good. I hope they're worth the hefty price tag. You know, it's funny. When we were answering our quizzes, Steph was the one that said that she was open to higher priced goods, but when you actually look at what we got... He has a couple of, like, I feel like a bit higher end items. Like, you have a $150 item on there where mine caps out at 98 I did check the box that says I'm okay including some higher end items sometimes. Yeah, stitch fix. More like price fix. But hey, there was a small silver lining. When I see the total here, it does still seem like, oof, I'm, I'm like, I'm paying a bunch of money. This is over $200 with a discount and the discount if I buy everything. I was gonna say, yeah, for you, your just total without any sort of discount is 322 bucks, yeah. which is a lot, but not as hefty as mine, which is $409. Total. It's $409, but if I buy everything, I get a 25% discount, which saves me $100. It's a lot. So if, and this is a big if, if we liked every single thing that Stitch Fix sent us, we would be able to save ourselves a little over $222. I think setting it up this way and giving you like a little discount if you keep everything also puts you in the mindset of like, oh, I guess I'll keep this if it's good enough. I'm not sure if it's encouraging you to like really, really love every piece you're getting or if it's encouraging you to just like keep it because it's kind of a hassle to return it and you don't get the discount. <laughs> well, Stitch Fix. You are not helping your case. But okay, if I have any hope of hitting my budget with Stitch Fix, I need to love every single item that they sent me. So you better wow me, Stitch Fix, or mark my words, all of it is going back. One other thing that I saw that was packaged with my invoice is this, which appears to be kind of like the styling guide. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's already giving me an idea of like, hey, here's the one item. Here's the things that you wear around it. You don't have to buy everything. I like that I'm already seeing more colors. Granted, it's not like, let's go to Photoshop and crank up the vibrance that I have here, but I see purple, I see deep red, I see a nice saturated blue. Okay, not a bad start. More color than appeared on the survey. It also gives me a, a little, little blurb here. It says, hello, Matthew. Happy New Year and welcome to your very first fix. I'm excited to get you started on a styling journey. I noticed in your profile, you mentioned that you like brightly colored outerwear and I thought that this was a fun addition. The splash of burnt orange hues adds a nice flair for each look. The high quality design that's sure to keep you comfortable during the Raleigh winters. Wow, that's pretty cool. I that's reckon so personal. Oh, yeah, that's great. I like that. I recommend layering this jacket over the even tied hoodie, adding the DDW jeans, and topping the look off with your favorite sneaker. Can't wait to hear your feedback. Cheers, Catherine. That's awesome. Way to go, Stitch Fix. That's really cool. And I have that's a completely cool. different and also personalized message from my stylist, Amanda. Stephanie's stylist also appeared to have gotten the color memo and opted for more of a mix and match casual style. So. Should we crack it open? It's like Christmas all over. Yeah, this is so it. fun. Okay, I like this. Oh, I like that sweater too. It's, it's really soft. And as far as colors go, like it, obviously it's not as like in your face as I would normally go. It's much more muted, but I like the color. I think it would pair with actually a lot of stuff that you have really nicely. Could be like a wardrobe staple kind of thing. I like this as an individual item. Hey, way to go. Immediately off the bat, thumbs up. Stitch fix, well done. Listen. I'm comfortable in my masculinity. I can admit when I'm wrong. And so far it seems like I may have been a bit harsh in my initial reactions. Or maybe not. Whereas I think for me, so this is my first sweater choice. And while it does feel really soft as well, it's got a great texture, it's got a great stretch. I'm not actually a fan of the pattern. I love a floral, like I love a really nice burst of color and a bold pattern. But this is giving me like a little bit more grandma's potpourri than like fresh, cool, modern pattern, but of course I'm gonna try it on. Cue the final outfits montage. All right, so uh, here we are with the Stitch Fix outfits now. This is outfit number one. This is the one that was specifically outlined by Catherine, my personal stylist, in her recommendation algorithm. And I gotta admit, I like this. I like this a lot. The colors work really well. It feels like me. The pants are actually incredible. Across the board, this is not something that I myself would have picked out for me. But I gotta say, I think all these pieces 
work together. This feels cohesive. I like it. I could see myself wearing this. I gotta say, Catherine, whether or not you're a real human or just an AI living in the Stitch Fix mainframe, you understood the assignment. You were able to take the pieces of my personal style that worked, the color and the structure, but give me something new, something out of my comfort zone, something that I might actually want to wear again. Outfit number two for Stitch Fix, just to call out what is theirs. It was the sweater plus the lavender button down. In their style cards, they recommended partnering it with a dark slack, and then I added just like a dark shoe on the bottom. This episode has gone from, hey, we're trying on stylist to, hey, instead, we're just gonna take a walk through the multiverse to see what had happened if we had chosen different career paths. This is from the five minutes that actually existed in Matthew's life when he turned to me one day, really disillusioned with theater, we're like super poor, we're living in New York, and he's like, you know what, this theater thing, you know, for the birds. Instead, I think I can teach. I can become a professor at like an, a high-end university. This yeah. is what you would look like if you had picked that path. This is Professor Pat. These pants, these like nice dress slacks, they're from Dick's Sporting Goods. I got these as my outfit to go golfing last year for the PGA Tour. In doing so, I found literally the nicest, most comfortable, best fitting pair of like black dress slacks I've ever had. Next time that you're looking for a nice dress slack, I highly recommend Dick's Sporting Goods. Shock of all shocks, that is not sponsored. But while I was busy having myself a grand old time, finally being seen by the fashion gods, Stephanie was having a bit of a different experience. I'm not quite sure how I'm feeling about this, how this look is looking for me. So while Matthew had his stylist actually recommend these pieces together, I just had the pieces and I didn't have any specific outfit recommendations. And what I found actually when looking at the styling cards is that I didn't have a lot of the other pieces that you're supposed to pair things with. Mm. From the Stitch Fix box, the only things that are actually on my body are the pants and the shoes. Once again, Steph was feeling the Stitch Fix fatigue that had been haunting her this entire episode. I don't wanna jump to any conclusions here, yeah. but I also think that stereotypically, men need a little bit more help with styling and they need it to be a little bit more prescriptive and yes. that's what you got. Whereas for me, I got some pieces and then they were like, well, if you want the whole outfit, you can spend more money. You're, you're getting like the Stitch Fix DLC. Exactly, it feels like I have to microtransact, except it's not microtransactions, those are like $50 a piece to buy the other things that you wanna get. It's macro transactions. Yeah, macro yeah. transactions. Stephanie's stylist really approached her box in a very different way than my stylist did. Instead of easy to follow detail instructions like I got, Stephanie was expected to have some higher level of styling prowess and a more developed wardrobe to pull from. It feels like there's a little bit of a discrepancy there and it could be totally accidental, so I really don't wanna call anybody out here. I just think that I didn't have the other pieces that I was supposed to wear with this. Even though the writing was on the wall for Stitch Fix, we had to see it through to the end. Okay, let's talk about okay, the stuff yeah, that's actually uh, from the box. The shoes, I really like the shoes. They're very comfortable. The pants, I, I'm a little bit confused about the pants. I don't think that they're too big. And at the same time, I don't feel like they fit me very well. Without the belt, they really gap in the waist. And so this just probably wouldn't be a pair of pants that I'd be like, oh yeah, this fits perfectly. I'm just gonna grab this out of the drawer and go. I think what this says to me, and this client said they are sensitive about their bottom half. We I'm not that them. sensitive. It's really fine. No, you're not. But again, you got to think about them trying to get you as a new customer. Yeah. And it's like, let's give them something stretchy so that way they're not worried about like how it fits around their waist. And I think that's the trouble. When you say you want to minimize a part of your body, it doesn't mean you want it to fit badly and it doesn't mean you want to put it in a bag. You just want something that fits well. You just want it to fit correctly. Even though she was feeling defeated at this point, Stephanie was still willing to give outfit to a chance. I think this is hardcore autumnal Steph right here. Clap a matcha latte in my hand and I'm on my way. The Stitch Fix items here were the red denim jacket, which has like a good bit of stretch. It's a nice color, I think. I think it works with my eyes really nicely. I'm actually really impressed with the fit. They nailed where your shoulder hits. They nailed where your wrist is. Like across the board, when you're looking at jacket fit, this is almost as precise of a jacket fit as you can get, which I'm shocked by. What can I say? I'm a jacket guy. I always appreciate a good jacket. Underneath is also from Stitch Fix. This was in the box. I like the short mock neck here. It doesn't cut off my neck. I like this color of green a lot. The jeans are mine, the belt is mine, and then again, these are the same shoes from the last outfit. I think these work well as a, you know, as a cohesive unit, and this was not hard to put together. I think this is a little bit of a different universe, Stephanie, but she's fine. What a ringing endorsement that is. So, how'd they both do? Well, from the beginning, we were looking to see which affordable online styling service would give us the best results, the 100% human or the one with the algorithmic advantage. They needed to be able to elevate our style while still being able to bring in our personal preferences and not go over the $600 budget. And I can confidently say they both failed. Now, hear me out, both services had moments of success. For Stephanie, the Fiverr stylist really seemed to understand her love of 
of comfort and cute but casual silhouettes. Both outfits kind of fit her personal style, even if some of the actual fits of the garments were a bit off. Heck, out of both of us, she was the only one to find a full head-to-toe new outfit that she loved, even if I was left feeling a bit more like a reject from a K-pop band. I didn't hate the pieces, but I certainly wouldn't be reaching for them the next time I got dressed. However, a huge point in its favor, it did come in under the budget. With that extra 50 bucks, who knows, maybe I could go buy some clothing dye from Michaels and give these a bit of color myself. All in all, I'd probably give the Fiverr stylist a 3 out of 5 stars. While we found someone whose style we admired, we probably would have had better results if we shopped around a bit more and found someone whose style truly matched our own a bit more closely. You know, like one who didn't view the world through beige colored glasses. And then there was Stitch Fix. Honestly, if you told me at the start of this episode that we were going to be pulling back the curtain on Stitch Fix's double standard practices, I wouldn't have believed you. But it's there in the footage. A fundamentally different and fairly negative skewing look at women in their survey. Now, while I may have been underwhelmed by their initial offerings, they really did seem to take my quiz answers into account and give me items that fit me. I likely would have never tried any of the items that they sent in that box if I found them in a store, but they really worked for me once I gave them a chance. At the same time, they gave Steph one of the least satisfying experiences she's had on this channel, and she had to witness me in a thousand layers of nail polish. Clearly, even with the algorithm giving them so much data to work with, there are still some kinks to work out in that system. I was rooting for you, Stitch Fix, I really was, but since we're not satisfied with every item we got, we can't count their discounted pricing towards the total budget. Meaning that in the end, Stitch Fix went over the budget by 131 bucks. Can't really be counting that one as a win. So with two failures under our belt, I'm determined to make our next round a success, trying to find if the secret to learning better style is doing it face to face. I refuse to end my time here on style theory without hitting the one goal that I've had since the start of this channel. Learn how to take my style to the next level and show all of you loyal style theorists that fashion is for everyone. So the next time we're kicking the budget to the curb, my friends, we are opening up our home to get up close and personal with our two professional stylists. You better get ready because I only have two episodes left hosting the channel, and theorists, I plan to go out with a bang that just might break the bank. Until then, my friends, remember, it's just a theory. A style theory. Keep looking sharp. Speaking of optimizing parts of our everyday lives, I want to take the time to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Opera. Opera is a state-of-the-art browser that takes browsing the internet from a den of distraction into a world of productivity. I'm not gonna lie, most of my time spent online these days is spent researching for upcoming episodes. And that means one thing, tabs, tabs, and more tabs. Before using Opera, I was drowning in tabs with every episode, and trying to find the tab that you need, impossible mode. But with Opera's intuitive tab island system, tab management has become so easy. It's basically a relaxing vacation in your very own browser. Opera automatically groups tabs based on content, so I don't have to lift a finger. Plus, you don't have to worry about all those annoying pop-up ads since Opera has a full built-in ad blocker. Kinda helpful with where the internet is these days. With one click, you'll be enjoying ad-free browsing, no extension necessary. Truly, it's genius. And if I need to save a key piece of evidence or grab a quick screenshot for our editors, Opera is once again taking the work out of my workflow. With their built-in snapshot feature, I can create, edit, and share a screenshot without having to go back and crop out all my tabs and personal information later. And best of all, Opera does all of this while saving your device's battery life. Its battery saver mode can help your battery charge last up to an hour longer, and they do all of this for absolutely free. Yep, all of those amazing features come at the low, low cost of F-R-E-E -E free. And you can get started on your better browser journey today by clicking the link at the top of the description. Thanks again to Opera for sponsoring this episode. I'll see you again in two weeks. Two more episodes to go.